Welcome everyone and thank you for joining today. The title of today's webinar is Real-Time Threat Detection. Our speakers today are Raphael Kelbert and Jonathan Strauss. We, my name is Stephanie Anderson. I'm the Global Webinar Manager here at Pathlock. Um, and before we go any further and they introduce themselves, um, I'd just like to go over a few housekeeping items. Raphael, can you go to the next slide? If you have any audio issues during this webinar, please click on preferences in that audio. From there, you can check to see if you are using the appropriate audio device. You can also click on the play sound to check if you can hear the sound coming from your speakers. This presentation will take approximately 30 minutes to an hour, um, and there will be a Q&A session following the presentation. So please type any questions um, into the Q&A chat box for our speakers to answer at the end of the event. To prevent background noise, everyone is on mute. This, record, this is being recorded and will be sent out to all attendees and those that registered at the end of the event. And with that, I'll turn the time over to Raphael and Jonathan. Thank you very much, um, Stephanie. So uh, let me start to introduce myself. I'm Raphael Kelbert. I'm product manager here at Pathlock, um, responsible for the area of threat detection. Um, yeah, I practice this area since uh, three years right now. Um, yeah, start to uh, grow up. Not only SAP focus, I will focus it uh, on all other cross applications in the future. Yeah, Jonathan, please introduce yourself. Thank you. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. My name is Jonathan Stross. I'm a solution engineer at Pathlock. I've been working since uh, approximately seven years in the SAP security business and um, are happy to uh, give you today a brief insight on our um, solution. Yeah, thank you very much, Jonathan. So um, le let's have a look on the agenda, what the plan for today. Uh, first, we had a instruction. Uh, we already had it right now. And now Jonathan will follow up with a small company and solution overview, what Pathlock uh, in general can offer to you. Then I will take over and we can discuss a bit about threat detection with Pathlock. Uh, what is threat detection? Why threat detection is necessary? And uh, yeah, which challenges you are facing with that in there? And uh, yeah, we brought some small use cases uh, to show you uh, in, in small bites uh, why it is necessary and what we can offer you uh, as a solution. Then um, we can show you where to start and how to build up a successful uh, threat detection solution within your security environment. And uh, yeah, we brought a small customer example uh, for how to start these things. And we have some key takeaways for you. Uh, we will end up in the Q&A session Stephanie mentioned in the beginning of this uh, webinar. So Jonathan, I would like to uh, yeah, let you start with the uh, company introduction. Right, thank you. So um, Pathlock, the name has been around a little while, but uh, now with the merger of over seven companies uh, recent acquired recently, um, we are um, having, uh, we combined uh, seven different portfolios, seven different solutions, uh, which um, intersected each other, but um, complemented each other uh, into one single platform we are having a, we are monitoring currently over millions of millions of users for customers we have over um, a billion uh, business activities monitored for our customers currently we have around 550 500 plus employees around the world and normally when you have our solutions in place uh, we're talking about a 10 times return of invest by uh, uh, achieved by the customers through the automation uh, reduced costs and minimized risk exposure with our solutions um, we are we have customers in every uh, area in every um, also business area but first uh, we're very international since the merger. Uh, we have offices in the US, in Utah, in New York, New Jersey, Texas, in uh, Colorado, but also uh, on the European uh, side in the UK, Belgium and Germany, and also then in the in Middle East and Asia, in uh, Israel and in India. 
Brands you formerly probably knew uh, is uh, SAST. SAST uh, is one of the um, companies, uh, Pathlog, uh, or which merged into Pathlog, was based on the European market, as well as Security Weaver and CSI tools. Appsian, uh, probably uh, for the uh, US guys, were uh, probably already known. Uh, but those were the companies combined into Pathlog. Right, next slide, please. So as I said, uh, we have customers all around the world, also all kinds of sizes from um, pretty big uh, in annual revenue to even really uh, small in annual revenue. We have our smallest, uh, our smallest customer has uh, 50 users per system. Uh, our biggest customers has over 500 systems in their landscape. So uh, we're not limited to user size or um, uh, system sizes, landscape sizes, um, but also we um, are in a wide variety of business areas. So we have uh, Rolls Royce as an uh, engine engineering um, automotive industry, but also uh, in PNG um, as an example, uh, we have um, Siemens, we have KPMG. So from the financial sector to the producing sector of engine uh, engines uh, to the uh, sector of um, <clears throat> of tires we really have uh, or uh, support uh, any uh, kind of customer next slide please Yes, and how do we do that in general um, we're talking about three different um, three different tiers uh, tiers when we talk about uh, our 360 degree protection for business applications on the one side we have the application security then the access governance and the enforced controls for application security we're talking about vulnerability management code scanning uh, zero day research and alerts as well as detection and response um, of malicious activities which occur in a system uh, therefore also logging and cm integration for access governance, we're talking about role design and role redesign, compliant provisioning, separation of duties and risk analysis. Uh, there we're also talking about can do versus did do analysis. So is he able to perform those kinds of actions and has he already uh, executed SODs? Um, we're talking about access uh, certification and review as well as privileged and temporary access management. For the topic enforced controls, we're focusing on transaction monitoring, data masking, control enforcement and transaction blocking, but also dynamic authorizations and single sign-on, as well as uh, multi-factor uh, authentication enforcement. Next slide, please. Yeah, th th thank you, Jonathan. Um, so that's a small ramp up from our, wrap up from our company um, yeah, solutions we offer. But focus today is threat detection. Um, there we are deep in, in security uh, topics and we will have a hard switch here because uh, first of all, I will discuss what is threat detection with you. Uh, I will show you what a threat detection is. Um, we say it's kind of the last thing you implement in uh, your security uh, yeah, environment because uh, first of all, you make your users and your roles safe. So who has access to your system? Then you can manage these with access base, um, access control as well. That's the next layer. Then you will uh, implement a vulnerability detection. So um, you will look at the parameters of your system. You, you will look uh, how safe is the configuration and you can do that uh, periodically, like once in a month or once in a year. A typical thing here is that there is an auditor coming once a year and checking all your system against uh, threats or against vulnerabilities here. Um, um, in these topic there is as well, um, they, they are checking if there are SOD conflicts within your uh, role um, yeah, scheme you managed in your role-based access control before. And the last line then is threat detection because when you scan just period periodically, uh, you will lose all the things actually happen in real time in your system. And with threat detection, you can uh, manage or you can monitor all things, uh, all activities happening 
actually in the system and not with a large uh, yeah, delay when you uh, normally do it once a year, uh, there could be 360 days uh, gone since there was a thing uh, popping up. Uh, so you use threat detection for that. Um, that's as a short uh, introduction to what threat detection is. And then uh, when you see at the NIST cybersecurity framework, um, it's one of the most common frameworks, uh, how to implement um, a cyber security uh, scheme for the whole company. Um, you see five different topics. Like, uh, first, you have to identify, um, uh, then you have to protect, detect, response, and recover. Um, identify means uh, that you, you, you will look uh, at what things are uh, relevant in my business. What are my, my environment uh, I face in, which country, um, yeah, uh, governance uh, things I have to focus on and things like that. And you will build up a strategy to protect your, your data. Um, then that's the next point here. To protect it, you uh, take first measures like access control, awareness and training, data security, um, information protection, um, maintenance of the systems, protective technologies, and yeah, that's all things you uh, build around to uh, yeah make it most safe that no one is not allowed to get into your system will get into. And um, the next part then is to detect things going on in the system uh, which are not normal, uh, and that is the first part where threat detection comes in. Anomaly, anomaly and events uh, are going up when there's something uh, not common in your system happen. Some activities are ongoing. And uh, also you can see um, continuous security monitoring like uh, auditing and things like that should also be able to be placed in, in the detect section. Um, yeah, and all these you should in a, uh, initialize a process to do that. How is my detection process and how it is done? And you have to formalize it and write it down. And then when there is something happening in your system, you have to uh, handle that anyway. And that is what is planned in the response um, part. And in the worst case, maybe your system, system goes down or something really bad is happening, like uh, you got a malware thing or in, in um, Trojan encryption tro Trojana, so you can't access your system anymore. And then you need a recover plan to uh, make your business run as normal as fast as possible. And yeah, with our threat detection solution, we support you especially in the detect and respond area because uh, we make things visible and you make you make it able for you uh, to implement measures how to handle these things uh, in the protection area we have other parts of the uh, product portfolio jonathan uh, told us before but that should not be focused today um let, let's have a look on facts and challenges uh, we are faced uh, within security uh, or securing sap systems a fun fact, or not a fun fact maybe, um, is that 41% of the companies say uh, that they use a CM, a security information and event monitoring tool, uh, which is not including SAP. So, and 41% of the companies um, of the survey here, uh, there's no, is, is a blind spot for SAP systems within their security monitoring tool. And also only 24% of the uh, respondents said that they are using a SOAR. So um, the next step, uh, security orchestration automation and response uh, solution, including SAP. So overall 60% um, of the companies we are asking here say uh, that they are using a uh, monitoring tool but from these 60, only 24 are using a response tool as well. So they just, uh, just 24% have implemented measures how to handle these things up going there. So overall, we can say 80% or near 80%. Um, there's a blind spot for CM because they might monitor it, but they don't handle it afterwards. 
um, a big thing uh, upcoming also um, on, on the sub insider uh, research and from March 2022 is that 30 three percent of the companies are facing a lack of cybersecurity resources um, because as all we know it's hard to get specialists and it's really a hard market to get good guys uh, with security knowledge and uh, so we have to find ways uh, to reduce uh, the amount of, of things they have to handle and to automate as much as possible and that is the point where we can come in uh, with our PathLock solution here, PathLock threat detection, to reduce the value uh, your specialists or your IT teams, uh, security teams have to look at um, because we can filter and we can uh, focus you on the main things really, really important for you. Um, uh, also, we uh, find out 30% um, said that they have compromise of credentials or password misuse. Uh, password misuse that could be something like uh, sharing passwords uh, with with colleagues or um, maybe uh, they can uh, get a password uh, from a user they're not allowed uh, not with sharing but on other ways and uh, yeah uh, so you got to compromise uh, user access management and uh, yeah you have not your fixed rule uh, base access control like you thought uh, it should be and um, yeah, when you see on the on the figure, I guess we lost my fellow yeah, colleague. I think, we lost, I think we lost sound on Raphael. For you, so okay. um, ah. next to ah, now you're back. Yeah. Now you're back. You were uh, you had an outage there. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, on which point? Uh, previous slide, actually. Uh, not previous slide. Uh, yeah, this this slide. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I, I highlighted um the. The points where we can um, yeah, go into and help you with our real-time threat detection uh, to face these these challenges. Um, for all the other ones here, we have solutions with our vulnerability scans from Pathlock as well. But yeah, today is the focus of threat detection. Well, probably lost again. So the connection is not pretty stable. I will take it from here. Uh, just a second. Jonathan. So, yes, um, I just told you the, the screen. Um, you were... Um, having uh, connection issues so uh, I would just take it from here um, yes as Raphael said uh, with our portfolio we're um, able to support uh, our customers uh, not only in the highlighted but in every um, uh, aspect uh, shown in this metric but uh, today we're going to focus us on uh, the CM solution so what do we and how do we enable customers um, implementing our uh, for dedicated for SAP um, CM solution? Um, well, there are multiple vendors, Splunk, QRadar, Arcsight, uh, you name it, um, where, which have also the possibility to pass uh, or to also receive uh, data from an SAP system. But our approach was to say, okay, first first things first uh, we want to stay inside of sap 
So we have created a SIEM solution, which is delivered is being delivered as a transport, a single transport. And within that, we have data sources, or we collect data from data sources. So 67 different uh, logs, we filter out data. We cover with that multiple environments. So doesn't matter what kind of SAP system it is, if you have a, uh, what kind of a database you have, if it's a HANA database, we have dedicated um, log sources also for that, which we can uh, get our information from, as well as cloud applications. And with that, with the data sources, with the different data sources we um, collect or uh, take into account, we created over 100 uh, 1,500 plus threat signature patterns, which um, monitor your system 24 seven. On top of that, we have approximately 25 so-called complex events available out of the box. Those are events which are not single, a single event, a single ongoing, like creating a user, but uh, creating a user and deleting it right afterwards probably you have something to hide. So this could be uh, two events which are non-critical uh, uh, on their own, but very critical when they occur in a, uh, together in the system. Uh, why do we say approximately 25? Um, the numbers of um, threat signatures and uh, complex events are steadily increasing. Um, it's always IT security a race between good guy and evil guy. And uh, we're keeping track on the uh, newest market developments, newest um, possible um, malicious ongoings, um, and implement those also in our standard rule set, which we deliver out of the box. Thanks, Jonathan. Let me may, may let me take over again. I, I hope the sure. connection is better right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, um, yeah, we uh, as Jonathan said. We have these um, threat signature patterns and complex events available for you. Uh, but when we develop new ones, you have to put them in the system. And that is why we easily um, uh, allow you to upload uh, and uh, compare uh, your uh, con content uh, available in, in the real time threat detection from Pathlog. And uh, you can also, if, if needed, download your content when you create it your own risk or your own patterns and um, you can download these ones and share it with other systems where the threat detection is also running and uploaded it there then and uh, that is to ensure you uh, that you're watching for the latest threats all the time and yeah at least uh, you can analyze your data directly within your sap system uh, so you don't have to use uh, uh, external CM solution, which is most of the time really cost extensive um, to use it, but you can enrich your external CM solutions with real, uh, real important threats you can detect within your SAP system. So you can set up filters and put or uh, yeah, um, download uh, these things to CM to your CM solution or at least you can you can hand them over and you don't have to pay for all the log lines you're analyzing but just for the ones you think it's uh, really necessary to have them in the CM solution to monitor there uh, as well and to handle them there as well um, may Jonathan um, the next slide or the next thing that we will jump in to a demo, uh, I disconnected my um, VPN because uh, of the internet connection. May you can open the system for me. Just uh, jump in um, our um, yeah security radar, um, and I, I will I will save it uh, through things your what we'll see there, so that we will have a solution overview. Just a, a sim start, please. I know that's not the plan actually, but we can make it. We're dynamic, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, perfect, thank you. So uh, here you can see um, our, our solution. Um, um, let's focus on the on the left-hand side where the menu is displayed. And there you can see the configuration setup. And 
you you don't have to click in Johnson just go that we can see it and there you can see um, a setup thing and different other things like uh, what what you can configure uh, and yeah may just jump into the data sources that can we that's one thing we can do and as I said there's uh, 67 available right now here in the on this system there are 64 uh, available because uh, three more are uh, in the development and not yet uh, shipped to our uh, demo session here or uh, section and um, you can see and uh, there are data sources like ABAP changes where, where data source code changes are stored in and you can see also J2EE uh, security logs it's not a typical uh, thing for SAP but it's an SAP related system and also uh, we have this uh, HANA DB con connect it's a bit more in, in in the top uh, HANA audit trail and uh, yeah so uh, we you can you can look at your HANA database as well and uh, with the HTTP logs you can um, follow your web services uh, or web service log files and so all the all the data sources connected to your SAP system uh, we are continuously uh, improving these but yeah we are facing the most important things right now um, yeah, thanks. Go back to the menu, but please. And yeah, here you can see as well uh, how easy it is to uh, download and upload the content because there's just a click of a button and you can download the content, upload the content, and you can uh, content uh, compare. Uh, you can compare uh, the contents with with others. You can distribute content to other systems where the uh, solution is running as well. And yeah, that's really really easy and to support your cm tools with export we have this toolbox on the left hand side in the bottom uh, where the cm export is uh, available and there we um, support all the uh, typical formats like j2ee uh, no no not j2ee um, like uh, key value pairing or uh, just uh, a common event format uh, things like that we have uh, five or four um, different formats we can hand out over uh, to other solutions. Yeah, that's. I think that's enough for a small introduction. Um, what is possible, and we've seen uh, the data sources. We have. We can look into the events as well. But yeah, uh, we don't. We don't will do that right now. It's too technical and too deep. Then. Yeah, back to the presentation. Thank you. And I think now it's nearly uh, so that it's your part right now. Um, we. We brought some uh, easy use cases for you, easy to understand. I think we'll focus on two of them right now, and the left and the right one, and the one in the middle due to uh, the time thing. We will, we will skip it, but we can show it to you uh, when you when you ask us. Uh, we can hand out oh when we hand out the um, slides. Uh, it's also in the slides available for you. And so with authentication uh, buffer modification, uh, user without any right. Uh, to do things in a system will get an SAP all uh, the biggest uh, yeah, thing you can get and uh, it's not visible within the profile you, so you can't see it in the profile and you can't see it in the change documents uh, but with the real-time detection we can see it and we can uh, monitor things like that and you get an alert about uh, yeah, th a thing like that has happened and also um, without any right to modify uh, the window payment run uh, it is possible when you have the view um, uh, yeah the view only rights it is easily possible to modify um, a vendor payment run um, due to an architecture flaw uh, from sap side and yeah i think these two parts you can show right now in this system as easy things how to monitor. sure so thank you rafael Yes, uh, we will focus on the uh, left to uh, uh, very left and the very right side, and um, yeah, so we will directly hop into the system. Okay, so as Raphael already mentioned, uh, when we talk about CM solution, we kind of talk about okay, what's happening currently in my system, and if you now have a look at um, how an auditor a normal auditor would do his work he will come one uh, uh, visit a company once uh, will create 
somehow of a snapshot, so you could say, of the system landscape. But what happens in between those snapshots? And that's right where our threat detection or in general um, CM solutions come into place. They monitor then a whole time span. So um, we are here on my demo system. Um, I'm logged in as, oh, that's the wrong window. I'm sorry for that here. I am logged in as the user Malice. Malice um, has uh, mediocre uh, rights. She's allowed to um, have a look at the vendor payment run. Um, she is allowed to look at uh, some users. She's working in the back office, but she's not allowed to change anything. So the very first thing I will do as Malice, my um, daily business, I have to check on some vendor payment runs. I will have a look on the position on the vendor name Apple, and I can see okay, I have here the um, destination, the uh, the bank account, I have the total amount, and uh, some some just addresses um, uh, of this customer. And now she is not able, as we can see, to change here data, but actually she is, but that's hidden. Uh, it's a architectural flaw, not within SAP but within this particular application. Uh, and as you, as you can imagine, probably for every displaying, um, for every display uh, transaction, there's also a change transaction. And depending on how the developer implemented this, this can be very critical. A code scanner will not find this flaw. Um, it will only then be shown if you have the right measures in within your CM solution in place. So what am I talking about? I will now have here a look at Apple and there is something called OK code. Every button click, every action you do within a, a SAP system, um, a certain variable will set will be set to a value. And depending on this value of the variable, the action in the program will take part. Uh, take place. So with a little bit of guessing, I could say, okay, well, display will be probably something okay called like disp, um, but that's none of interest for change. What What's that? What's that? Um, probably CHG for ch change sounds reasonable. And as you can see, oh, I'm now able to provide input. I can say, well, let's change here the US uh, bank account. And let's just take a German one. Now I'm only in change mode, but I'm not able to save. But guess, I guess where there's a, also a possibility to change, there's also a possibility to save. So what will be probably reasonable for save, SVE? And as you can see, I have now, I have now changed also the, the bank account uh, of this particular uh, vendor. And if I would like to, I could also say, well, this has worked. So probably I can also increase the payment amount. Uh, let's say it's uh, 11 million, uh, 500,000 instead of, and say SVE for change. And you can see the total transaction volume increased by 1 million. I have, even though I have not the rights, uh, I have changed data in the SAP system. So as you probably know, in an SAP system, there are a lot of tables. Uh, behind every application, there is a table. And uh, especially table changes is also um, being tracked down in various logs. And we are also taking into account uh, table changes, but more on that later. So. As we could have seen, as we have seen, Malice is a very, very malicious uh, um, employee, um, and she will uh, also wants not only to to ha uh, have a look at users, but uh, also to change them. So as we can see, um, oh sorry, uh, Jay Strauss, um, she's able to display, but she's not able to change. We are not, you are not authorized to change users in group demo. The same goes for if I go to SE16, uh, that's a table browser, and I will look at user 02. Um, I am not allowed 
to view the table. So I'm not allowed to have a look at the um, at the pass uh, at the um, uh, user zero two table, which also contains informations about uh, information about the password of users. So she done a little bit of social engineering, and with this she uh, was able to tell the one um, the one um, developer that. Uh, she wants to have a certain program in place called ZBruce, which she can execute. She's able to um, execute some programs which generate reports for her in her daily business. And she's also able to execute this particular program. With the execution of this particular program, it has already happened. She is now able to visit SE16. She's now able to get the table contents, to check the information, on here, as we can see, uh, we she is able to go to the user maintenance and also change users. So, well, that's not John Stross, that's Jonathan Stross. Uh, I could give her, give him also roles different. I could give him different profiles, whatever I want. I have practically SAP all through the execution of one program. And the nice thing about that is. If we have a look um, at the SU01, which is the user maintenance, normally if you assign a role to a user, there will be a change document. And if we now look at the role, um, at roles and profiles we assigned and executed, we will see only we have now, uh, according to my ah, probably a system in the US. We will only see the assigning of her standard role, uh, Z user um, demo, which I have provided pre beforehand, and there have been no um, no documents, no change documents. We're talking about an SAP all. We can see. Oh, sorry, that is uh, Jay Stross. We want to look for malice. Execute. And as we can see there, we do not have a role which is uh, containing SAP all uh, or near to SAP all authorizations. <clears throat> well, system is taking a little bit of time. I'm sorry for that. As we can see, we only have here the role uh, Z demo user BF. That is just the demo role that she can execute the vendor payment run. And that's it. No SAP all, as we can see here, has been assigned at our time now. So normally, if you're a system owner, you wouldn't have a clue what has happened right now in your system. Um, you would probably, at the end of uh, the year, um, see that uh, when you're getting the numbers in that someone has stole has stolen you f um, multiple millions of dollars but probably uh, that's too late she's already on the bahamas somewhere um, enjoying her life but what would have happened if you would have sast in place or a cm solution with the um, with the patterns of sast you would see the following two events occurred. We have on the one side, the user uh, Malice has assigned herself SAP all through a manipulation of a certain table. And also that uh, table has been changed. The table view, uh, uh, the table Z vendor and the key value Apple. And I can see that this is a transaction code and I can see who has changed it. But I know Malice has only display rights. She is not able to. That's why I have here a very high severity. So now I can say, hey, here's something maliciously going on the whole time in my system. And I can acknowledge or create an incident. In this case, I will create an incident and start the whole process of escalating, um, escalating the malicious activity in the system. This is also uh, connected 
to or able to connect to various ticketing systems, uh, ServiceNow, you name it. And this will be the main point for the security operation uh, center team to um, start the work workflow of resolving and remediating uh, this issue. So I would hop back to the slides. So what we have seen here so far and summarized in a process is this. We have multi-million of log lines, depending on how big your landscape is. If we're talking about one system, we only have seen one system, uh, how many users, so on and so forth are in a system. And it's like finding the needle in the haystack. And what every, um, what every uh, CM solution does, it gathers this information. But the thing is, the very interesting thing about that is, you do not want to look through a million lines of log because you not only need to understand them, but there are so fast, so much lines that you're not able to um, yeah, financially uh, compensate uh, the large team you need of doing that. So therefore it's nice to have a filtering, a intelligent filtering about uh, through that normally, with other CM solutions, you need to build up yourself um, this knowledge. You will have first to have a look at the ongoing traffic and then filter out and sharpen the logic. In some extent, you will also have to do this with uh, the Pathlock security radar. But as uh, we already mentioned, we provide out of the box uh, 1,500 plus uh, threat signatures which already monitor from the very first day our consultant is on site uh, your system or multiple systems. So with this logic, out of those million lines of logs, we filter out, let's say, a thousand, a thousand events, which really are interesting. The rest, we will say, OK, that's none of our interest. Those thousand events, that's a reasonable amount to deal uh, for the uh, security operations center. But uh, there also, you can always sharpen the preset we deliver, the, the content we deliver to suit your needs. Also, depending on which system, uh, what type of system, you will have there different kinds of um, aspects, different kinds of crown jewels. So you could say you want to protect. And depending on that, you will sharpen your rule set or we will enable with our uh, solution uh, enable you to sharpen yourself the rule set we gave we give you out of the remaining findings we will have also investigations we will have we will extract mal probably malicious activities and the security operations team now very fine can very granularly and fine determine and say okay those are ongoings in the system we need to investigate out of that you will either have a finding or you will sharpen again uh, your uh, rule set, update the positive negative list and um, continue. Afterwards, uh, you will have out of those, let's say 10 investigations, two findings, which then can be uh, triggered uh, a whole nother process uh, for um, creating a ticket and starting your process, how to deal with it. Also, we're able then to say, okay, those thousand events are much more reasonable, thousand thine, uh, lines of log, uh, than a million lines of log. And we will forward this to a central CM solution of your choice where IT has the general, where, where it's monitoring every system. The nice thing about that, it's SAP centric. Um, we're not only looking at the operate uh, the, on the operating system, the database, but also and uh, with a precise focus on the SAP system. And we're understanding the processes of the SAP system and having, and due to that, we are able to um, create those contextual events, the complex events, which um, is quite hard to do uh, out of 1 million lines, um, or a very nice thing to have if you face a million lines of log. Right, this is our approach, and this is what we have seen so far uh, also in the live demo. We created log lines uh, through doing this malicious activity, 
um, our solution filtered out exactly what we were doing, creating critical events. We as a SOC team, we had a look on it and escalated it. And now the workflow <clears throat> would start. Also, with our solution. Thanks, Lefar. Yes, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Th thanks, Lefar, Jonathan. I, I would like yes. to say uh, let's continue um, because uh, the time is a bit going. Um, yeah, let, let, let's let's have a look to how to implement um, a threat detection thing. And it's really easy for you to start. Um, there are three phases uh, you have to go through. Um, first, you have to do some classification work. Um, the second phase you can do monitoring and then the third phase you can do the analysis uh, looks easy here but when you finish the analysis you shall go back to phase one and start with uh, uh, classification again then do monitoring and analysis so it's a continuous process but you can start with really small bites and uh, in a classification you shall be um, yeah, analyze your documents or uh, the information, the application processes, uh, which are really um, critical for your business, business critical things. And when you find your crown jewels, um, think, okay, these documents we will save and things like that, or these applications, these users we will uh, monitor uh, specially. And then you can set up the monitoring for each byte separately. So you can start with one point, find out in the classification phase, um, start the monitoring, and then you get alerts. And when you're a bit ongoing and you have updated your false positives list several times, then it goes like uh, the background noises are gone. And then you can put in the next topic. So you can continuously increase what you're doing here. And overall, you shall install a monitoring strategy and a risk management for that, um, so that you have a team or uh, some uh, people in your company which are doing nothing else than security for yourself or for your business. And they shall not do other work next to it because then they have a conflict about doing uh, things for, for these other topics and my security will go back and uh, yeah fall fall apart um, from from uh, the list and yeah for that I brought a really simple customer example um, with us please the next slide and um, it's uh, the Dua IT uh, in, in Germany uh, yeah one of the leading companies here for uh, machine uh, machinery equipment manufacturers or um, also automation and uh, digitalization uh, industry and they had a really common problem that uh, the SAP uh, support users need access to the system and uh, to when they ask uh, in the uh, SAP basis uh, to get a user uh, it takes uh, one or two uh, days uh, if the till the basis uh, could create the user, and then they created the user with maybe an, an access time for two days, and they send it back to the SAP team. And the SAP team they have several other things to do, and they don't, uh, uh, they can't access um, the user within these two days. So um, it was expired, and they have to restart the process again, and it took a lot of time. And they implemented a Fiori app location for uh, the SAP uh, support users to get an own user via an app. Uh, so they just have to click, um, got a user, and uh, so they can uh, go on the system. But um, then you're losing uh, the uh, control, uh, the sovereignty um, of your uh, user um, yeah, in, in your SAP system. Uh, at least the basis uh, is out of control. And what is if a, an internal user is using one of these um, support users because it's easy to uh, yeah, open the Fury app then, create a user and say, okay, I will, I will use it for doing uh, yeah, uh, bad things in the background and I can, I can use the user. So um, they use um, the path lock uh, solution to monitor um, these user activities from uh, these Fury application users. When one of the users is created, 
they put a special flag on that user. They will continuously monitor these user activities and then send over all these data to the CM solution. And within the CM solution, they enrich um, these information from SAP with information from the data network. So like uh, the IP address uh, from where, um, or the, the, yeah, the IP address uh, area from where the user is coming. And uh, so they can see is is it an internal or an external user, and they can decide it. And if there's a misuse within this user process, there will be a, a flashlight on the table of the SOC team, and they will see it in the dashboard, and the table will blink, and they will say, okay, he has a big uh, misuse of the user, and they can directly uh, close the user. Uh, investigate in the background who is using it from the terminal ID in the SAP system and uh, say, okay, um, Malice has used, uh, Malice used um, the uh, Fury application SAP support user um, from the same terminal as her own user and so they can correspond it to each other. Um, that is a really nice thing uh, where they are glad to, to start with us. And that's just a small a small piece. They don't use the um, uh, real-time threat detection for other things right now, but that's our um, yeah, use case. We started and we proved it that it will work. And now they continuously improve their system with the QT. Uh, Jonathan, I will go to the next slide then. I think that's the key messages done we have to you. Um, first of all, uh, avoid blind spots in security management. Uh, so the SAP system for a lot of security tools is a blind spot because it's special. Um, we offer you a solution, install our software and integrate all the things we can monitor in your external CM SOAR SOC solution you have already implemented. So please avoid blind spots here. Then um, define mission critical information and activities and uh, implement measures how to handle these if there's a violence uh, within um, yeah, these things. Uh, but if you don't define what is mission critical, critical information for you, um, which activities are really important for you, uh, you will never uh, be able to monitor things like that or to implement measures. So you have to go through the mass of uh, all your processes and define which are really important and which are critical for my business. Then uh, you shall integrate your SAP security strategy into your enterprise-wide solution. And that is why we offer uh, this CM export solution. Um, yeah, it's like, if, don't, don't have blind spots here, but also don't think just in your SAP team. If you have a great SAP security um, yeah, team and things like that, please um, let the teams work together with other teams and uh, combine uh, the knowledge of all the teams because sometimes um, there's another way how to do it and how to manage it. And it should be uh, possible to yeah communicate with colleagues from other security teams if they are separate teams from separate uh, yeah, applications. Then we will like to say, uh, create a dedicated SAP security team independent of the day-to-day -day business of other departments. And that is why I say, when you implement our software, you will have one or two guys looking at these logs continuously improving the filter process and improving uh, yeah, the quality the outcome quality, uh, you can reduce the costs for shipping uh, the log lines uh, to the CM solution. And at least you can uh, have a knowledge transfer from SAP to uh, CM solutions, because at least you need some guys uh, with SAP knowledge to do SAP security solutions. If they are based in your SAP environment or in the CM SOC team, it's on yourself, but you need special guys for SAP security because it's not the common thing. It's a total different way. Uh, most of the things uh, working in SAP. And uh, yeah, avoid a lack of cybersecurity resources and use the grain capacities to solve problems. So if you uh, install the software and reduce these amount of log lines, um, please don't 
skip all the resources you already had and and say okay i, I can i can invest the money uh, or no i can i can save the money uh, please invest the money and keep the people and uh, grow up your security um, things because it, in, in future we you otherwise will have a lack of cyber security and last but not least uh, keep your security up to date so always uh, keep um, the uh, content at the latest version available um, try to update the software as fast as possible and yeah but thanks we will um, give you as the takeaways uh, with you and then I would like to hand over to Stephanie with the next uh, slide the Q&A session Thank you, Jonathan and Raphael. Again, if you have any questions, please add them now into the question box. And while we're waiting for those questions to come in, Raphael or Jonathan, can you go to the next slide? I'll do the announcements. Okay, our next webinar for SAP will be how to use the power of attribute-based access controls in your SAP environment, and that will be Tuesday, November 3rd at 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Um, and then we have our Pathlock Innovation Series coming up December 5th through the 8th, and that will be a series of webinar and online events um, from December 5th through the 8th. We're gonna have a bunch of other companies and partners presenting on everything from SAP to PeopleSoft to Oracle and it should be a really great event so if you want to join and look at what sessions are available for that you can find you can register and find the links for that either on our pathlock linkedin page you can join our email list or um, you can reach out to us and we can make sure you're registered for that um, so if you want to reach out to us our email address is events at pathlock.com and I don't think I'm seeing any more questions other than um, is this webinar um, recorded? So this webinar was recorded and it will be sent out to all attendees and those that registered. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Jonathan, can you go to the next slide? We just want to say thank you very much. Thank you to Jonathan and Raphael for presenting and thank you all for coming and we hope to see you at future webinar events. Thanks from our side as well. Thanks for uh, having a great time together here and hope to see you next time. See you next time.